Hi everyone! Before describing them in greater detail, Friedrich Marpurg summarizes Fugel episodes as the portions which serve as connection between the different expositions while the theme is not used. Marpurg later expands this definition with seven points, each of which may be summarized as follows. The episode should be related to the theme, and it should be well adapted to the counterpart. It shouldn't contain any melodic features which cannot be easily developed in all voices by transposition or imitation. Melodic ideas for the episode should come from the fugue subject and counterpart, or should be freely composed. It will be necessary to master the various kinds of imitation to write well-devised episodes. Episodes must not be too long or too frequent. They should be arranged that they can be easily interrupted by a thematic entrance unless they end in a cadence at which the theme would re-enter. The episodes need not be formed by all voices so that the theme may re-enter all the more clearly and emphatically. Marpurg's seventh point is more a general statement about fugal writing. All fugues should end with a statement of the theme or a short harmonic turn following the theme. Expanding on this statement from Marpurg's third point, we may add that fugal episodes are often written using invertible counterpoint and sequence and may be modulatory. It should be noted also that an episode used within a fugue's exposition is typically termed a bridge. In this five-part fugue from Book One of J.S. Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier, after the entrance of the fugue's initial subject answer pair, Bach uses this bridge to move to the second subject entry. While this fugue doesn't use a modulating subject, inclusion of G and E natural in these bars, along with an underlying progression which may be heard as a 4-5-1 cadence in the work's dominant minor key, F minor, suggests a brief move into or onto the dominant. This bridge therefore was included to bring the work back into the key of B flat minor for the following subject entry, a move which appears to be confirmed by the lack of F minor elements in this subject answer pair and Bach's immediate introduction of the final subject entry still in B flat minor after their appearance. Looking at the construction of this bridge, many of its features agree with the earlier points about episode characteristics. The melodic motif, for example, is simple and can be easily combined with itself using invertible counterpoint. It is also rhythmically derived from this section of the counterpart. The bridge also is modulatory and uses sequence as its basis. To create the sequence, Bach combines the melodic motif forming a recurring 6-3-6 intervallic pattern, the top line of which moves through B flat minor's chromatic tetrachord. Harmonically, the tetrachord's fifth degree, F, supports F minor and F major harmony, with the intervening E flat note harmonized with C half diminished seventh harmony in 4 2 inversion, which creates with the following F major chord a 2 5 cadence in B flat minor. B flat minor's dominant then resolves to first inversion G flat major submediant harmony, which harmonizes the tetrachord's sixth degree with the chromatic sixth degree G, harmonized with the first inversion G diminished submediant chord. The intervening F note, Bach harmonizes with D flat major seventh mediant harmony in 4 to inversion. The tetrachord's 7th degree is harmonized with 1st inversion A flat major subtonic harmony and the raised 7th degree with a 1st inversion A diminished chord. The intervening G note, Bach harmonizes with E flat dominant 7th subdominant harmony, also in 4 to inversion. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.